The most interesting guests. The coolest conversations. Keep watching episodes of the Grizzly Podcast. Hosted by Irvin Scott. Follow the Grizzly Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many more apps to have our episodes delivered right to your iPhone, Android, or any other device whenever they're released. Can't get enough of the Grizzly Podcast? Stay up to date with all our latest news, events, and behind-the-scenes footage by visiting grizzlypodcast.com. So what does it mean to be on your Grizzly? It means hard work, dedication, and it means progress beyond your Grizzly. Hard work, dedication, and progress. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. Coming to you from the City of Angels, this is the Grizzly Podcast. Hosted by Irvin Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Grizzly Podcast. I am your host, Irvin Scott. And today, I am joined by a special guest. She is actually one of the uh, most notable child actresses of the 90s. You may have seen her on Nickelodeon's The Secret World of Alex Mack. She was also on Boy Meets World, uh, The Babysitter's Club, the original Freaky Friday Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, Natanya Ross. Woo! Hey, Hi. how's it going, Natanya? How are you today? Everything's good. It's busy always, but yeah, everything's good. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Natanya, thank you so much for being a part of the Grizzly Podcast. I wanted to bring you on this show because not only do we uh, celebrate nostalgia here, uh, but on top of that, we celebrate people that are on their grind, people that are on their grizzly, hence the name, the Grizzly Podcast. I feel like you embody what we do on this show. You're basically somebody that's on their hustle, constantly grinding and just constantly getting stuff done uh, to achieve your goals and work towards your dreams. So let's take them back. Tell us a little bit more about how your journey started. You were originally from New York and you moved out to L.A. with your mom to pursue a career in acting. Is that correct? Yeah, I moved. um, Yes, we moved from New York to L.A. to do um, my first TV show when I was very young and like nine years old. And um, yeah, it just kind of worked out for me (laughs) and we never went back. So, yeah, that was it. After that, that first show, I just kind of kept working. And yeah. You moved from New York to L.A. to pursue a career in acting. Uh, You came out here with your mom. That eventually worked itself out because uh, your hard work didn't go unnoticed. You eventually landed a role uh, on an ABC series called Billy. Uh, You played the role of Laura on that show. What was it like being a part of that series, Billy? Uh, That was awesome. That was like my first kind of big, big thing. And um, my first, you know, experience in Hollywood. And um, it was a cast of amazing people and, um, we became like a little family very quickly and yeah, that was awesome. That was my first taste of everything. So, um, I always look back fondly for sure on that show. So you're best known for your role as Robin Russo on Nickelodeon's The Secret World of Alex Mack. Can you tell us a little bit more about your character on that show? Honestly, in the first season, she was kind of this like young, sassy, kid who always had like a a smart comeback or or like knew the right way to do something and yeah I think as you saw her grow up um she definitely became more like alt like an alt girl or emo goth um I say a lot in interviews kind of like the OG Nickelodeon goth emo girl um you know, she understood the darker pockets of life um, in, in a way that most kids at that age don't. She understood like 
pes- pessimism and she had a very like fine-tuned sense of sarcasm and uh, experienced her bouts of like insecurity and depression and all of that and was very vocal about all that. And I think it was the first time in television at that time, especially on Nickelodeon, not in television, just on Nickelodeon, I should say, that we had like representation of the demographic of kids that were also feeling that way in real life. Um, So, you know, Robin was very special in that sense and she was very fashionable and, you know, loved her friends very much and, and just really wanted to like, you know, be part of, but also like be true to herself too. So she was, she was a special one for sure. (laughs) Did you kind of incorporate some of your own personality into that character? Yeah, that was all scripted. Um, yeah, none, I mean, none of us incorporated really our own like personalities, I don't think, into um, the characters. The characters were all, were all very specific and like actualized. And um, I think it just like took understanding who they were for us to be able to portray them in the way that we did. But Um, Yeah, no, I couldn't have been any more opposite from her if I tried. I was like very confident as a teenager, like once I hit a certain age, of course, not at first, but very confident, very self-assured, completely different fashion sense. I was actually, I dressed more like tomboyish. Um, I was always jealous of Larissa's wardrobe. I was like, damn, I wish I could wear a beanie and jeans like that. I would have much rather been in that. And Um, So, yeah, so me and Robin were like exact opposites, you know. What was it like being part of that cast? It was great. We were a family. You know, we grew up together. We grew up on television together. We started out making this like small little show that nobody would know what was about to happen with it. And then, you know, before we knew it, it blew up and like was just everywhere. And they were making toys of us and games and food and books and you know it it was crazy and we got to experience all of that together which was really special and I think that it just kind of like you know uh, led to a lifelong friendship what does that feel like just knowing that the show still lives on in people's minds and hearts yeah I mean we're very grateful for that that's a very very special thing we're incredibly grateful for it um you know, it's uh, it's crazy that it's lasted this long and I can't imagine it's going to keep going too much longer. So I think that we just kind of like savor every moment as we can and every special opportunity when I do autograph signings and stuff. Yeah, people bring a lot of memorabilia and it's really cool and it's um, it's really awesome, you know, so very special feeling for sure. So fast forward uh, after, you know, being a part of the uh, secret world of Alex Mack you and a bunch of other cast members actually reunited. So uh, yeah. this was a reunion special. Uh, yeah. Something that you actually uh, had something to do with, as well as Darius Love. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you tell us more about how this whole thing came about? Uh, what inspired the idea? Um, uh, there, were, there was someone on Facebook who had written something about uh, my episode of Boy Meets World. And I commented as I try to do as often as possible with fans and stuff. And that person actually had, his name is John um, Brody. And he just mentioned, um, and he's actually an actor and a writer and producer as well, but he had just asked and mentioned if anyone had ever, you know, thought about doing a reunion special or if we'd been approached to do one and we hadn't. So I called Darius and we called Jason and, you know, we just decided to reunite privately. And so we got, um, so it was the three of us and Ben Smith who played Lewis Driscoll. And we just, you know, hung out on a Sunday and that's kind of where it all came about. And Jason, um, who played Scott on the show, he has a production company called in the light production. So he was able to help us secure universal studios and, you know, it just, it snowballed from there. And I was able to get all the cast out that day and, you know, it took us a few months, obviously, of planning and all of that good stuff. And yeah, then we just made it happen. So you appeared in one episode of Boy Meets World and you played the role of Ingrid Iverson. Could you tell us more about what that character was like? Yeah, I mean, she was just kind of like a nerdy girl who um, asked Corey to the dance because it was a backwards dance and Corey and Sean 
you know, uh, I think he said yes in like a dream sequence or something like that. And they decided she wasn't cool enough. So they were going to make her cool. So it was like, I think it was Boy Meets World's first makeover episode too, which is probably why it, it holds up so well. I think that's why fans remember it so much. And yeah, they gave me a makeover and turned me into the hot girl. And then I decided I was too hot for him and dumped him and then went back to him and then left. I mean, it was like a whole, like, you know, a whole thing. Being a part of the Boy Meets World cast as well, at least just for that one episode, what was it like just being on set with, uh, you know, uh, Ben Savage, uh, Ryder Strong and Danny Official? Um, yeah, I uh, I didn't have any scenes, I don't think, with Danielle. So I actually don't really remember um, spending any much time with her. Um, my stuff was with Ryder and Ben mainly. Um, and then the other people that were uh, guest stars on, on that week as well. So I, th- I think I I think I hung out with the other guest stars more often. But Ben and I definitely got close during that week. Um I remember uh, Thunder Alley was filming right next door and I just done a movie with Andrew Keegan. So he came over a lot to hang out. And yeah, I mean, it goes by really fast. It's only five days. So, you know, there's there's like three days of rehearsal, dress rehearsal and then a taping. So it's you blink and it's done, you know, and then three hours of each of those days is spent doing schoolwork. So yeah, I mean, it was it was fun. It was a fun set for sure, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't remember like too much of like the hanging out stuff. You also starred in the 1995 television movie of Freaky Friday, along with Shelley Long and Gabby Hoffman. What was it like being a part of that project? Yeah, that was fun too. It was it was great experience. Super fun to do. People still love it to this day, which is awesome. Very classic movie classic plot line yeah it was great and your row in a sense was similar to that of ingrid iverson uh in boy meets world where you played this nerdy character yeah sure a little bit another like nerdy girl who's just looking to fit in and you know uh get her get her shot and uh yeah you know i played that role well i guess (laughs) So after pursuing a career in acting, you took some time off. Uh, what was going on during this time frame? It's a pretty well-known part of my story. I kind of stumbled into drug addiction, unfortunately, and spent all of my 20s um, in pretty like rock bottom, hopeless uh, drug addiction. And then, you know, when I turned 30, um, got really got sober and stayed sober and maintained sobriety and Um, Yeah. So it, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it just, that, that's what I was doing. I got, I got caught up and um, unfortunately it took like most of the decade to get out of it. And, and that was it. I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't going to college or anything like that. I just had lost my way as a lot of people do. And, and fortunately found my way out of it by the time I turned 30. So yeah, (laughs) that's, that's the deal with that. Kudos to you for doing what you've done uh, and and the fact that you're still here to talk about all this and and look back on the experience. And and now it's a positive one because you've obviously learned from it. You've grown from it. And hopefully now you can inspire others to kind of shake that habit as well. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I try and do. You know, that's what my life has become about now. And I run a rehab in Los Angeles. So I help other people that are suffering, get into treatment. Like I, you know, had been given the opportunity to, and do a lot of work in the homeless community and just all sorts of different stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely take a negative and turn it into a positive, but not everybody gets the chance to do that. Unfortunately, I say it's probably like it's seven out of 10 people don't make it, you know, maybe even more. So I feel incredibly grateful and honored and lucky to still be here, um, you know, and have made it through that uh, period of my life for sure. Tell us a little bit more about your wedding and how that whole relationship came about and everything leading up to this wedding. Yeah, I mean, we've been together six years and um, yeah, I mean, planning a wedding is very overwhelming and um, exciting and nerve wracking and stressful. I mean, it's a million different emotions. And, 
Um, but I was always like grateful to be doing it every step of the way. And I try to never forget that, like even in the times where it feels really stressful or overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful experience. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, so yeah. So Natanya, uh, again, I had mentioned to you that the Grizzly podcast is a show about inspiring others to get on their hustle. And obviously you're somebody who I think uh, represents what we do on this show. You're always on your hustle. You're always on your grind, regardless whether you're on television or uh, in movies, or maybe you're just helping out the community that in itself is being on your grind and we're yeah. doing this daily. So uh, Natanya, uh, for the listeners and the viewers that are tuning in right now, if you could offer them any advice, uh, you know, for anybody wanting to pursue a dream, uh, for anybody wanting to, uh, you know, follow their dreams, pursue a go, if you could offer them any advice, what would you say to these people? Um, I would say that, like, if your intentions are in the right place and you execute it with hard work, like, usually God will provide you know, and we'll provide kind of that open door that will be very clear to see, to walk through to where you can like step up and, and be of help. And as far as like, you know, um, a goal of like a, a big dream or anything like that. I mean, I think that one cliche, never give up on it. Right. Um, that's number one, but I think that like above and beyond all of that, like before we can start to conquer that kind of stuff, we have to always like lead from kindness and love. And, and my saving grace has always been like, the more I think about you, the less I think about me. And if you can lead with a heart of service in my experience, usually everything else just comes, you know, it just comes. Wonderful advice there. And Natanya, uh, are there any like meet and greets going down in the future? Uh, I know like you're, you're part of these conventions as well sometimes, right? Where you I going? am. Okay. So yeah. what's the next convention going down? Um, I don't have one lined up right now. Um, we, we took a quick, I did one just recently in New Jersey. We took a quick break so I could get through the wedding and all of that. So I'll probably pick back up in January. I promote it on my social media. I'm pretty good about that kind of stuff. So I will be somewhere near one of you guys at some point coming up in January. And then I did just do a film and more details to come about the release of that and, and what all of that's going to look like. And, um, and then I have, uh, uh, an expected release date of my memoir. Actually, my book is coming out in sometime in 2023, 2023. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's it for me. I had no idea about the memoir. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, very cool to hear, uh, looking forward to seeing what you've got coming out. Uh, yeah. And Natanya, for anybody that wants to keep up with you and just everything going on in your world, uh, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, the best way is honestly Instagram. It's the one I fuck with the most. I don't I'm not good at the rest of them. So it's just at Natanya Ross, um, N-A-T-A-N-Y-A, Ross, R-O-S-S. And that's the best way to find me um, right there on Instagram. There you go. So for anybody wanting to know more about what's going on in Natanya's world, uh, if you want to know more details about the wedding uh, and how that went, uh, if you want to know more about uh, the movie that she's got coming out soon, uh, if you want to know more about uh, the comic cons or the, uh, the, the, you know, the meet and greet signings and all that stuff that she does, uh, please feel free to touch base with her there. She's on Instagram. You can always give her a follow. And yep. she'll definitely have all the info for you there. So, yeah. uh, Natanya, again, you're somebody who I feel represents what we do on this show. I applaud you for everything you've accomplished. Uh, we definitely want to know more about what's going on in your world. So please be sure to stay in contact with us. Uh, looking forward to that memoir of yours and looking forward to everything else you've got going on in your world. And with that being said, I want to leave you with one last thing here, Natanya. This is something that we've always said on this show. Stay on your grizzly. Okay, I'm going to do that. <laughs> there you go. Natanya, thank you so much for being a part of the Grizzly Podcast. And we look thank forward you. to catching up with you in the future and have a great new year. We'll you see you. In, thank you so much. We'll see you in 2023. See you then. <laughs> Take care. Get, get it, get it, pop. Let's get it. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. Don't, don't, don't miss a thing. Subscribe to the Grizzly Podcast YouTube channel to access full episodes, video clips, and more on YouTube. The most authentic podcast.
podcast is online at grizzlypodcast.com and on all major podcast platforms. Guest appearances and real conversations that will push you to hustle. The Grizzly Podcast is now streaming. Hi and welcome to Trademark Expediters. Whether you need a trademark or copyright, we can help make the process easy and affordable. Protect your company name, logo, or slogan with the trademark. Protect your songs, books, photographs, and other creative works with a copyright. Complete our easy online questionnaire in 15 minutes or less. Clear pricing, no hidden fees. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Get started today. Learn more at TrademarkExpediters.com or call one of our friendly specialists at 1-800-510-1082. Affordable, easy, expedited service. Trademark Expediters. Yo, turn it up. Hard work, dedication, and progress. Stay on your Grizzly. Yeah. Thanks for checking out another Grizzly Podcast episode. We'll see you next time.